So I'm backstage at MozCon, about to interview Brittany, who just gave an amazing speech and presentation on feature snippets and why that's important and everything. So I'm gonna to talk to her a little about that. It'll be pretty fun. Brittany, thank you for give, you know bringing me backstage. Thanks for having Not many me. people go backstage, right? Yeah, no. It's a very small number it's a of special, people. It's a special, special so group. I appreciate that. Um, you did an amazing presentation before. Thank you. Can you tell the audience a little about yourself so they know who you are? Yeah, so I'm Brittany Muller, the senior SEO scientist here at Moz. And I spend a lot of my time doing research and development for our tools and research and education for the community. Awesome. And you work at Moz, but you also have a company called Pride Marketing. Yeah. What is Pride Marketing? Yeah, so I started Pride, I think it was back in 2012, 2013. Whoa. And it was basically a a niche medical marketing site back in Colorado. But yeah, it was a boutique medical marketing agency that I grew and had a lot of fun with and learned so much about the space and myself and what I like to work on and what I don't. So, yeah. And now you're, that's, that's part-time, right? No. So that has been paired back to just some very small consulting okay. side work. And now you're like full-time with Moz? Correct. And at Moz you do what exactly? I am the senior SEO scientist. Which means? Which means I do a lot of research and development for our tools. I create lots of educational material for the community, and we're constantly trying to help answer questions and fulfill some of those needs. Okay, cool. Um, I think uh, I was talking to Russ before, and he's like, whatever data I need, I should just ask you, and you'll give it to me whenever I want. That I give him data? No, that if I ask, want data, yeah. Yeah, I should ask, ask you for it and you'll just give it to me. He's so full of it. Okay, he's gotcha. the data guy. Yeah, he said I We steal it from him. He says he's the guy who does it. He loves data for some reason. He he's like, loves it. He's a big nerd, I guess. Yeah. In a good way. A nerd yeah. is a good thing in these In the days. best way. In the best way. Yeah. Um, so what do you love most about the SEO industry? I love how sort of we do have this culture of just being open and sharing different things about what's going on, what you're seeing with your website, what kind of changes have affected you. I think that's really what cultivates all of us as professionals and helps all of us level up as an industry. And the sharing and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just I love a, that. It's amazing. All right, so your speech, your presentation was all about feature snippets mm -hmm. for the most part. Yeah. And feature snippets is probably the hottest topic right now in Google SEO world. Yeah. Um, both from a controversial standpoint, and both from everybody wants it or they don't want it, but if they don't have it there, it's kind of like, they, they don't want the feature snippet because they feel like Google's taking their content, but if they don't have it, they feel like, oh, my site's not good enough to be a feature snippet. Why am I not good enough? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so you, in your presentation, you gave a stat around 40 to 46 or 47% a differential between a click-through rate, I guess. Can you explain that stat? So this was trash analysis. Right, you said it wasn't statistically significant. It's not statistically significant, but it was looking at Google Search Console data of, I basically pulled all of the keywords, the ranking position, and the click-through rate. And then I split that data by keywords that were showing a featured snippet and keywords that weren't. And I tried to get the average ranking position for both buckets about the same so that we could really compare the click-through rate. Obviously, there's tons of other variables right. and all sorts of stuff going on, but we did see about you know around 40% uh, decrease in click-through rate on non or on featured snippet keywords. So the ones that had the featured snippets, those boxes had a much lower click-through rate. They did, okay. but I think that's not reason to not go after a featured snippet, no. right? Okay. So interesting. Okay, and um, also one stat you showed was about info sites, informational sites kind yeah. of dominated the sites, uh, the feature snippets box. Yeah. Uh, specifically finance, I think in education also. Yes, huge. So finance sites, NerdWallet was one of like the top ones out there. Obviously mm -hmm. Wikipedia is informational. Yeah. That's interesting, this is an interesting stat. Yeah. One thing I found, you were showing some funny examples of feature snippets that were just like wrong or like why are they showing that was yeah. uh, not too long ago, somebody was like showing a feature snippet of, I think it was like best smartphone camera you could buy. And the result showed the iPhone 6 or something. Really? From an article from like 2014, 2015, whenever the iPhone 6 came out. I'm like, that's definitely not the best smartphone camera. That's the, I was surprised you didn't put it on there. I should have I, I, I sent it I mean, to you I was looking way. for examples like that. That was like a perfect it. example. Like, like you could get a much better camera right now. Like the camera we're using right now is, is much better. So, so. funny. Um, oh, anyway, so funny. and you also said that like typos didn't matter. Well, not cases. for this particular case, right? Yeah. I can't, it's impossible to say, and I don't want to say for all featured snippets. We don't know how they work, right? right. We don't know if it's different industry by industry or different spaces. Are, so. you, are you thinking about setting up some type of test case to automate the testing of how feature snippets 
come in and come out. How cool would that be? Because Google's like feature snippets is known to be used machine learning yeah. and AI. And because of that, it's constantly changing. Even like you go today, you look at it, like in a few hours, that might be gone. So fast. And it happens a lot. So it's hard to, I, I know you did real time testing like of it, mm -hmm. and then things vanished and came back and all this, all these different things happened. Yeah. But how do you test something that's rapidly changing so fast? It's so hard. Is there a way? I mean, it probably would be possible to automate it to some extent. I haven't even explored thinking about that, but that's a really cool Is it worth doing idea. or just because it's cool? I think it, both. Okay. I think it would be worth doing. I think if you could, you, if you could find similarity across different types of featured snippets for something, mm -hmm. for example, that would be meaningful for people, for SEOs yeah. in particular. And because, because it's changing so fast, it's almost, I feel like it's almost impossible to, and then Google's like looking if you're, if you're you, like you said, maybe Google's looking to see if I'm trying to test it and they're playing with me. Yeah. There was a patent oh, from Google yeah. years ago about SEOs, about like something about like if SEOs are constantly testing things, we should go ahead and like reduce their rankings. And Matt Cox is like, well, just because of the patent, it doesn't mean it's being used. Are you serious? Yeah, it's like an old one. You could ask Bill uh, Smosky about find that. that. Um, so that was pretty interesting. I remember you're probably exhausted. So that just a so couple funny. more points on no, you're good. Moz. I need to find that though. That's super interesting because yeah, I feel like this has happened multiple times to me. Yeah, I don't know if they necessarily do it. Just because of the AI factor on feature snippets, I think it's just so quick to change because of that. Yeah. That's why I think that's changing so much. I don't think Google. I don't think Google's playing with us. Maybe they are. Maybe they're playing yeah. Moz IPs. I don't know. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Mm. Speaking about Google playing with Moz. Yeah. So I, I kind of feel I cover obviously Moz and Google a lot. Yeah. I kind of feel like Moz and Google have this kind of like weird relationship where you guys are always always like testing to see if what Google's saying is true and Google kind of maybe gets annoyed saying why do you doubt what we're saying do you think we're not honest and stuff like that yeah. but obviously as every single presentation here showed testing 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 is key yeah. so don't don't take Google's word for it don't take this SEO's person's word for it absolutely so how do you feel when like you see a Googler maybe make a snark remark about maybe Rand's study on click-through rates impacting uh, rankings and stuff. I think it's wild, specifically because of the work I've done in machine learning and the fact that to the level that their model is built, they don't know how some of this works. So how can they say for certain one way or the other as it is? Right. Um, that's what I struggle with. But yeah, it's funny. I actually hear this question quite a bit. People ask about the relationship. Oh, there's like conspiracy theories as well. Well, I don't think anybody, <laughs> I mean, I don't think that you guys have like an open yeah, dialogue no. where you guys are like just arguing with each other. It just feels like there's a lot of tension there. Um, oh, interesting. I So I think the tension might be perceived from, you know, individual perspectives and little riffs here and there, but as a whole, Moz and I feel like we have a fine relationship with Google and we're super grateful for different representatives. But Moz specifically has pointed out that Google's saying X and we see Y. Yeah. Do you think Google's lying? Do you have an example you could share? Um, I mean, the whole seat click through rate thing, influencing, yeah. pogo yeah. sticking, yeah. user exp user experience type of stuff. Not user experience, but user actions influencing the rankings. And Moz has always been behind the data saying, okay, it, there's definitely a significant relationship there. And it right. probably is that Google's looking at actions. Right. Well, I think we want to prove it, right? Or disprove it. I, I do think we should be testing regardless of right. what we yeah. hear. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, those are just, I mean, obviously you don't speak on behalf of all the Moz. Right, just, right. I'm just, yeah. have to ask you the tough questions with yeah, my yeah. camera. Um, and there's a lot of noise all over the place and MozCon is, all, is done. MozCon is being disassembled as we speak. Yeah, that turned off already. Wow. I know. I don't know. It's not a good sign. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, where can people learn more about you? Um, you can find me on Twitter. I'm probably most active on there. I'm somewhat active on Instagram, and my email is Brittany at Moz. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. This was fun. So that's it for MozCon. Just disassembling the whole entire place now. It's a whole different space. Wish they had the lights on the whole time. Not a big fan of dark, but <laughs> whatever. Anyway, that interview with uh, Brittany was fun, and looking forward to heading back to New York. Uh, hopefully the flights won't be too delayed. I already moved my flight from, I guess, uh, tonight. I moved it to tomorrow because the weather in New York is pretty bad and the feeling the flight won't take off. So wish me luck. <laughs>